Johnson's Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> Makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Arthur Q. Bryan, Dick Legrand, Cliff Arquette, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the Kingsman and Billy Mills Orchestra. <laughs> Again tonight, we bring you great news about the most important development in floor care in the past 15 years. Johnson's new glow coat is now positively water repellent. That means that at last, there is a self-polishing floor wax that does not streak, does not leave drab spots behind when you wipe up spill things. Dishwater, ice cubes, spill drinks can be whisked away, leaving your floor still shining. You don't wipe off the floor wax when you wipe up the water. Now, as you know, Glow Coat is easy to apply because it produces its own luster. There's no polishing. It's easy to keep clean because dirt, dust, and grime don't grind into that tough Glow Coat film. But most important, new Glow Coat is water repellent. And only in Glow Coat can you get this wonderful water repellent quality. It stays on, stays bright, even after repeated damp mopping. That saves you money as well as work. Tomorrow, give your floors new beauty and protection. Give yourself new freedom from floor care drudgery. Get Johnson's new water repellent, Glow Coat. It's at your dealers now in the same familiar Glow Coat package. <music> Wherever Mr. McGee of 79 Wistful Vista goes, he likes to go first class. If it's the theater, his seat has to be down front. If it's the fights, he likes to sit ringside. At the opera, nothing but a box. So we find him now with Mrs. McGee in a pair of fourth row seats on the aisle, going downtown on the streetcar. <laughs> As we join Fibber McGee and Molly. You know, you didn't have to ride downtown with me, McGee. I'm glad to have you, but I'm only going to the bomb town. And oh, well, see. that's okay, Molly. I had a good reason for... Charcoal Earth Ring. Charcoal Earth Ring, next. Connection with Neva Trout. <laughs> what were you saying, dearie? I said I had a good reason for coming downtown today, kiddo. You remember last night I and Mort Toops went bowling? Do I remember? Who was it found your bowling shoes for you? All neatly wrapped and stored away in the deep freeze. <laughs> That's right, you did. Hey, how'd you happen to think of looking in the freezer for those shoes, anyhow? Well, it was quite logical. The minute I found the pot roast you bought and the shoe bag on your closet door, <laughs> finding your shoes in the deep freeze was a simple deduction. <laughs> yeah, very sharp, kiddo, very sharp. But the reason I come downtown was, after bowling, Mort flipped a half a dollar to see which one of us would buy the hot buttered root beers you see at Kramer's Drugstore. And the coin fell on the sidewalk and rolled into the sidewalk grating. Oh, dear. And it was too dark last night to look for it last night, and I know just what grating it rolled under, so finders are keepers, and I'm the next guy... Next stop, call for Lazimer. Call for Lazimer next. Change for Nerf. <laughs> well, that's our stop, dearie. 14th Street. <laughs> yep. Well, it's like I say, a half a buck is a half a buck. And if more Toops is that careless with his gold, come on. Call for Lazimer. Call out for go for Lazimer. Nerf car. Let him out, please. My, this is an awfully high step, McGee. Maybe you better give me your hand because... Oh, no, I'm okay. I can make it all right. Oh, come on, kiddo. Let's hurry. My hero. Now, let me see. Now, the grading I'm looking for is the second one down from the mailbox. Let's go over there quickly. Oh, oh. Look. What is it? Oh, it's the old-timer, isn't it? Yeah, and standing right smack dab on my grating, too. My gosh, if he's already out, if he's already found that half... Oh, oh, oh hi, old-timer. Hello, Mr. Old-timer. Hello there, daughter. Hi, Johnny. Hey, you kids seen Bessie? No, no, we haven't, Mr. Old-timer. Are you looking for her? Got a date to meet her here, daughter. We're going out to the ballpark. Ballpark? There's no ball game this afternoon. Well, that's okay, Johnny. We hate crowds anyhow. <laughs> Me and Bessie, we like to be alone. <laughs> you do, huh? Alone. Yep, but somehow we always wind up with each other. <laughs> She's a fine kid, though, and at my age, a fella can't be too... Hey, uh, look, isn't that Bessie now, old-timer, coming across the street there? 
Yep, that's her. That's my Bessie. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't she cute? <laughs> Just look at her, daughter, smiling and jabbering all by herself and happy as a flea on a fat dog. <laughs> yeah, she seems like a very nice uh, uh, girl, uh, Mr. Oldtimer. Hey, she sweet. Uh, did you ever see such feet? She walks like she was pulling the plow, but ain't she? Hey, hey, Bessie! Here I am, O.T., am I, lady? That's okay, baby. I'm used to waiting. Well, the reason I'm late, O.T., I stopped by the beauty parlor to get prettied up. <laughs> it, uh, it took more time than I thought. <laughs> Must have took more time than you had, baby. <laughs> you keep crying, though. That's one thing I like about Bessie Kid. She never gives up. Oh, uh, excuse me. You remember Mr. and Mrs. McGee, Bessie? <laughs> Why, of course. Hello, Bessie. Hi, Bess. Oh, I'm so glad to see you all again. I'm a southern girl, you know. That's why I say you all. Oh, in fact, I'm a direct descendant of a 33rd cousin of some very close friends of General Lee. <laughs> My goodness, General Lee. You know, I believe I can see a little resemblance to that. Uh, yep, yeah, the general had a heavier beard, of course. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Bessie's not McGee. a... McGee! Mr. Oldtimer, if you're in a hurry to go, No I... hurry, daughter, no hurry. You know, Bessie had a fine job down there at one time. She was a member of the Peanut Pickers Union. Peanut Pickers Union? Goober Local 402. <laughs> but when they raised my dues, I seceded from the union. Well, like I always says, Bessie, nothing secedes like secess. <laughs> Don't you get it, kids? I simply said it's not funny, McGee. Oh. I don't understand it myself, but oh! <laughs> <laughs> Nothing succeeds like. <laughs> oh, that's good, Johnny. <laughs> but that ain't the way I heard it. The way I heard it, one fella says to tell the fella, say, say. <laughs> Friend of mine's got a new baby this week. Got red hair from head to foot. Is that so, says t'other feller. What did the mother say when she seen him? The mother, says the first feller. She just said, moo, she's a cow, too. <laughs> well, come on, Bessie. So long, kid. I'll tell you all. <laughs> Gosh, am I glad to get that guy off this grating. I thought he was going to stand here all day. Well, have you spotted the half a dollar yet? Is it down there? With the old-timer's big feet planted there, I couldn't even see the grating. Much less a half a buck. Uh Uh-oh, I see it. There it is. Well, hooray. You know, I'm glad that isn't a $20 bill, because if you get this excited over a half a dollar, I... Watch your trousers now, McGee. Don't tear the knees. Don't you worry, Tootsie. I should have brought along a stick with some chewing gum on it with me. Chewing gum. (laughs) Old chewing gum. Sticky. This grating is kind of tight, but I think I can get my hand on it. Ah, I got it. Success. Good. Now hop up and dust off your trousers. People are looking at you like... Uh, What's the matter? My hand is... It's it's stuck. Stuck in the grating, Molly. Oh. uh, I'm caught. Trapped like a rat. Oh, heavenly days. Can't you work it out, dear? I can't get my hand out. Oh. Uh, Help. I'm trapped like a rat.
sidewalk grating if you don't give him room. Does it hurt very much, dearie? No, it don't hurt much, but it's darn embarrassing. I feel like I'd got caught with my hand in the poor box at church or something. Hey, mister, the same thing happened to my brother once in Passaic, New Jersey. Yeah? Yeah, got his hand caught in the grating way back in 1928. Mm. His right hand, too. Well, how did he get out of it? He never did. We built a little shack around him and he runs a newsstand with his left hand. <laughs> Very funny, bud. Very funny. Now I'll go home and write some gags for the Undertaker's Journal. Oh, my knees. Hey, Molly, put my top coat under my knees, will you? That's it. Tuck it under a little more. All right. That's better. I'm glad you're more comfortable, dearie, but after all, we'll have to get you out of this predicament. If you could only hold your hand over your head to reduce the swelling. Yeah, that's a great idea, but my head isn't swelling. I didn't have to hold up 40 foot of sidewalk, though I might do it. Hey, why don't somebody do something? Call the fire department. Call, Call the fire department, he says. Maybe if they turn the hose on him, his hand will shrink. <laughs> oh, be quiet. Has anybody in the crowd got a hacksaw? No, lady, but I got a jackknife if you want to cut his arm off. Oh. <laughs> well, a lot of help we're going to get out of this bunch of comedians. You see why I'm so gregarious, Molly? You see why I hate people so much? Everybody said, oh, am I ever uncomfortable. Maybe if you'd let go of the half a dollar, you could get your hand out. I can't let go of it. My hand's all cramped up around it. My gosh, isn't there something? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Thank you, thank you. One side, please, folks. That's it, thank you. Hey, Hal, what's the matter? Oh, hello, Mr. Wilcox. Nothing's the matter, Junior, nothing at all. My manicurist is kind of bashful, so she hides under the sidewalk to give me a manicure. <laughs> well, you better tell her to hurry up. It looks a little like rain. Rain, oh, that's all we need. Did you hear that, McGee? Yeah. Mr. Wilcox says it looks like rain. Yeah, leave it to Junior to add the cheerful note. Well, what's so bad about rain, pal? Gee whiz, even housewives don't <laughs> dread rain anymore. Uh, now the Johnsons have come out with their revolutionary new water-repellent glow coat. Water-repellent glow coat. Here I am with my mitt stuck in a sidewalk grating, humiliated and embarrassed, and he goes right on making a living. <laughs> of all the callous... Yes, sir. What's water-repellent glow coat? Yeah, what are you talking about? Oh, don't... oh, baby, this is wonderful. What an opportunity. All right, step a little closer, folks, and I'll tell you. I'll tell you all about the greatest sensation in floor protection since the invention of the rubber heel. Hey, quit crowding me. Now look out. Get off of my back. Give this man room, please. You're trampling over my husband. Not so close. Not so close, please, friend. Friends, he says. There's no, they're nothing but a mob of Mormon maroons. <laughs> Now then, here's the most important news in floor care in 15 years. Johnson's uh, new water repellent. Wait a minute, Mr. Wilcox. Uh huh. Let me tell this. You're so long-winded when you get talking about glow coat, and I want to get himself out of that grating there. Yeah, Molly, but can you hold on a minute, dearie? What do you mean, can I hold on? Well, where would I be going? But make it snappy, Tootsie. I will, sweetheart. Folks, I am a housewife. Hooray! Molly, tell him about the. Uh, way be you... quiet now, Mr. Wilcox. All right. This is the voice of the ultimate consumer. Folks, I am a housewife. Hooray! I have always used Johnson's self-polishing glow coat on my floor. I didn't think it could be improved, but it has been. You bet. Because now we have Johnson's new water-repellent glow coat. That's it, Molly, that's it. That means when you spill water, like dishwater or something, your linoleum won't get all drab and gray-looking. Hey, and don't, don't forget you that you don't have to... You just wipe off the don't... water with a cloth or a damp mop. And there's your wax shining good as new. It will save you money, too, because this new glow coat stays bright after all kinds of damp mopping. That's the stuff, Molly. You don't have to re-wax every time you want to get your floor nice looking. So go and get some right now and see for yourself. <laughs> look at him go. My gosh, look at him run. 
Hey, you're quite a saleswoman, Molly. I bet you never got such quick action with a sales talk, Mr. Wilcox. Well, I usually have more. Oh. Hey, it's raining. Hey, let me out of here. Get help. I'll drown like a rat here. Do something, somebody. Get I'll, me. I'll do something, pal. Good for you, Mr. Wilcox. What are you going to do? I'm going to hurry back to the office. When all those people realize it's raining, we'll be swamped with orders for the new water repellent glucose. Yeah. I hope you get out all right, pal. Oh, thank you. guy can stop calling me pal as of this minute. He's the kind of a friend that if he get caught in a bear trap, he'd run home for a skinning knife. Hey, Molly. Molly, has it stopped raining? No, dearie. I'm holding my umbrella over you. Oh, well, much obliged. Anyway, this rain ain't a total disaster. I got rid of that mob. Oh, how do I always get into these things? Well, now that we have a few minutes peace and quiet, McGee, let's figure out how to get you out of this one. Now, if I help you pull, can we lift the whole grating out? I don't know. Let's try. Start lifting. One, two, three. Oh, I think it moved a little, McGee. Did you hear it creak? Yeah, but that wasn't the grating. <laughs> that was my wrist bones. From now on, I'm going to have to have my right sleeves made three inches longer than the left. I pulled so hard, I got... Well, my... well, what goes on here, McGee? Hello, missus. Well, for goodness sake, McGee, here's Ole from the Elks Club. Hi, Ole boy, and I'm glad to see you. You're a handy kind of a guy. Can you figure a way to get me out of here? Well, the good Jesus, how did you ever get in there in the first place, McGee? Or was you used coming out from someplace? Well, he was... <laughs> he was trying to retrieve a half a dollar from under the grating, Ole, and got his hand stuck. Yeah, do something, will you, Ole? I'm suffering. McGee, this is your lucky day. It just happens I get crowbar here with me. Oh. Heavenly day, so he has, McGee. Let's get to work, Ole. Yeah, can't you see I'm in misery, Ole? Oh, oh don't worry, McGee. I fix you up right away. I Fine. get crowbar right here. Good. Stood back, missus. I put him out of misery. I hit him with a little smack on the back oh. of his head. Oh! <laughs> no, no. Don't knock him out, Ole. Pry him out. Pry him out? Oh, yeah, sure. I didn't thought of that, missus. That's a good idea. Okay, McGee, I try and you lift. Ready? What do you mean, am I ready? You think I'm kneeling here reading a continued story or something? Sure, I'm ready. Get going, will you? Uh, you pull on his coattail, missus. And don't ever tell my missus I do this. Uh, why not, Ollie? Well, she's always telling me not to pry into something that's not some of my business. Now, here we go, McGee. Okay. Uh, hot dog! It's out! I'm free again! Yes, you're free, except for a 30-pound iron grating hanging on your wrist. <laughs> what do we do now? Well, go somewhere and have it piled off, I guess. Hey, Doc Gamble will take it off. He's always getting my thumb out of bowling balls and stuff. He'll know what to do, Doc well, Gamble will. all right, but can you carry that thing that far? Maybe I'm so relieved to be standing up again, I could carry it to Elkhart, Indiana. Well, thanks a lot, Ole. I won't forget this come Christmas. Oh, that's all right, McGee. I don't expect nothing for doing a favor for a member of Elks Club. See, they pay me for working. From outsiders, maybe I expect something. But from members, I am used to donating my time. So long, McGee. So long. Goodbye, Ollie. Well, come on, you poor lad. I'll help you carry that grating. Yeah, okay, let's get going. Now, let's not bang in anything. My wrist hurts. Well, come on, let's go. Kingsmen and California Orange Blossom. I'm a native of a place where flowers always bloom, and the fragrant scenery breathes a sweet perfume. Where the mountains touch the shore, the blue Pacific flows. It's there that everybody knows. My California Orange Blossom, with her sun-kissed eyes of blue. If you long to win her, let me warn you. Nine days, oh, Lord, she said, 
Go right in. Dr. Gamble will see us. My gosh, I hope he can do something, Molly. It's breaking my arm lugging this dad ratted sidewalk grading around. Why, this thing must wait. Oh, oh dear. Dad rat's a dad ratted. Every time I move, I whang this hunk of iron against something. Ah, Watch gosh. the furniture, McGee. Here, I'll open the door for you. Be careful now. Well, hello, Molly. Nice to see hello, you. Hello, Doctor. And... Oh, no, McGee. Yeah. Hi, Doc. Oh. Let me sit down. Oh. We came right over to you, Doctor, because... <laughs> this I can't believe. <laughs> My nurse told me there was a man outside with his arm stuck through a two-foot square iron grating. <laughs> but I gave her some nerve medicine and told her to go home and get some sleep. <laughs> oh, this is rich. <laughs> Come on over here, McGee. Let me look at you. Look at me, my clavicle. <laughs> Do something, will you, fatso? This cast iron bracelet weighs 30 pounds. At least relax. my arm... Relax, my boy, relax. 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 First rule in an emergency is keep yeah, calm. Keep calm. You mustn't upset yourself. Darn good. <laughs> Don't tell me how you got into this mess, because I couldn't believe it anyway. <laughs> oh, Doctor. It's not funny, a big septic. Ah, get it off, will you? Ain't you got any regard for human suffering? He is suffering, Doctor. Yes, but is he human? <laughs> <laughs> All right, McGee. Hoist it up on the table here and let's have a look at it. Okay. <laughs> wow. Huh. It is pretty swollen, isn't it? Yes, and red, too, Doctor. His arm hasn't been that color since he dropped his wristwatch in Uncle Dennis's elderberry crock. <laughs> well, there's only one way to get his arm out of there. Wait till I get some instruments. In 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 instruments? Well, what you going to do, Doc? Will, will, will I need an anesthetic? Ether? Solium Pentagon? <laughs> now, now the doctor won't hurt you, dearie. Mother's right here. Uh, My goodness, you're a big boy. <laughs> you're no fraidy cat. I'm not? I mean, of course I'm not. <laughs> you have to operate, doctor. I'm ready. I can take it. I can stand the pain. As long as it don't hurt. Ah, this will do it. My favorite saw. Saw? There's only one way to get your hand out of that grating, and that's saw it off, mm. right above the wrist. Now, you hold steady, you know. Saw it off? Saw it off! Oh, now, McGee. Not no. your arm. <laughs> Not your arm, the grating. Oh. Now, you hold steady while I work on it with this hacksaw, will you? I'll saw that Take bar it easy, through. Now. Before you can say Molly McGee. Take it easy. <laughs> How's your arm feel by now, McGee? Yeah. Circulation coming back all right? Yeah, fine, Doc, fine. My gosh, Doc, I, I don't know how to thank oh, you for this. Oh, think nothing of it. You don't need to thank me at all, my boy. I don't? No, you'll get your bill in the mail. Oh. <laughs> well, come on, McGee, let's go, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> What an experience. I don't know how you get into those things, McGee. Oh, I don't know. Just lucky, I guess. <laughs> Was all for nothing, too, huh? What you mean, for nothing? I still got the half a dollar, kiddo. And from now on, that's going to be my lucky half dollar. Well, it's off to a great start. But look, McGee, you can't keep that half what? a dollar. What you mean, I can't keep it? I found it and lose it. We... And you know who lost it, Mr. Toops. You gotta give it back to him, McGee. Now that's all. Yeah, but, oh, gee whiz, Molly. Don't make me give it back. After all, I went through to Back get the... to Mr. Toops. No. Look, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll flip him for it. Heads or tails? That's fair enough. Heads I keep it, and tails I give it back to Mort. Here goes. Yeah. Where is it? 
I don't see it. Uh, what down this grating here? I'll get it. <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm stuck again. Oh, don't tell me. You're stuck in the grating? No, nope, I'm stuck for a half a buck. It's tails. Mort wins. Well, I'll tell him where it is in the morning. <laughs> well, come on, kiddo. We've been All here right. half an hour. Come on, let's, let's go. go. Fibber and Molly return in a moment. It's the biggest news in years for homemakers. At last, there's a self-polishing floor wax that's positively water repellent. It's Johnson's new glow coat. Now, here's what that means to you. New glow coat now gives you brighter floors while it saves you hours of hard work. Because it repels water, new glow coat does not lose its shine even after repeated damp moppings. Does not streak. Does not leave drab spots behind when you wipe up spilled things. And that solid surface of tough, shining wax means much more besides. It means quick mopping instead of hard scrubbing. Far less wear on floors and linoleum. It means economy, too. Johnson's new glow coat stays on, stays bright. Not days, but weeks longer. Tomorrow, get the best self-polishing floor wax money can buy. The glow coat now on your dealer's shelves is Johnson's new water-repellent glow coat. Get some tomorrow. Dr. Gamble, wonderful, McGee. Yeah, he's great, kiddo. Always there when you need him, if you can get an appointment. You know what puzzled me? Uh, how did he happen to have a saw in his office that could cut metal? My gosh, I don't know. Let's call him up and ask him. I did. Oh, what did he say? Well, he said he got that last year when he had to operate on a steel man from Pittsburgh. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> Makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, Racine, Wisconsin, and Brantford, Canada, bring you Fibber, McGee, and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you? The fastest wax polish money can buy. That's Johnson's Cream Furniture Wax, the time-saving wax polish that keeps furniture bright and glistening almost without effort. For Johnson's Cream Wax cleans so quickly, dries so quickly, polishes so quickly that using it is almost as easy as dusting. A few strokes with a cloth do the cleaning, a few more bring out a bright, satin-smooth polish. And Johnson's Cream Wax contains no sticky oils to catch dust. Tomorrow, start using Johnson's Cream Furniture Wax. It's the fastest wax polish money can buy. There's excitement on Big Town coming to you next on NBC. NBC.